Hi, now we're going to be doing our translating functions, in other words, shifting things up and down and back and forth. Now, if you remember, just about any other graph we used to do, if something was in parentheses, that means shift it to the left and to the right. If it's positive, you shift it to the left. If it was negative, you shift it to the right. Um, so if you look at this, x minus, remember we did h and k? Well, x minus h, if your phase angle is h, that means you shift it to the right h. If this was positive, this means your h was negative, so you would shift it to the left. The midline is shifted up or down, so that's like k. Um, so shifting it up or down is your midline. So that means instead of being at zero, it's now shifted up or down. Positive, it's shifted up. Negative, it's shifted down. And this should all be in the videos I provided. So let's go ahead and do some select homework problems. Number 10 asks you to find the phase shift, which is H, and the vertical shift, which is K. It doesn't ask you to graph it, so let's take a look. First of all, there's no plus K. So that means our K is still at zero. If there's no plus or minus, then it's still at zero. So there is no shift up or down. Now in here, there is something in parentheses. And since it's normally X minus the phase angle, which would be H, then that means this phase angle is negative three pi over two. So that's how you find it. You just, H would be the opposite of what's in parentheses and k would be the number that's out here. Looking at this example, k would be positive three. That means this graph is shifted up three. This would be 45 degrees. Eight k, eight k would, k would, h would be 45 degrees, okay? Which means it's shifted to the right 45 degrees. So I'm gonna show you a way to graph these. That's a little easier than the way they show you on, um, on the video because I have a hard time fitting the lines in, making the markings, then fitting the lines in. I'd rather draw the curve first and then write all of my things around it. So if I look at this one, we want to graph this. This is number 18. So it says graph the function. I will draw a curve first. Just draw a nice sine curve because we know it's a sine curve, right? Next, draw your midline. Your midline is three because it's been shifted up three. Normally your midline is zero, but it's been shifted up three. So just label that three. And I'm gonna draw a line this way. This is not necessarily the y-axis, but I just wanna put labels on it. Our amplitude is one. So that means this would be one up from our midline. This would be one down from our midline. So now we've labeled it so that we know what our, um, our amplitude is. Next, our phase angle. It's been shifted to the right 45 degrees. Now we know that a sine curve crosses up at zero, but if it's shifted to the right, it's now going to cross up Label this 45 degrees, okay? So if you look, the period number is one. So that means this is two pi. Well, you notice they give it to us in degrees and two pi is equal to 360 degrees. So that means from here to here is 360 degrees. So I would say 45 plus 360 degrees equals 405 degrees. So this is 405 degrees because starting at 45, ending at 405, this is 360. I don't care that the book says grade, uh, graph it from negative 360 to positive 360. All I care about is that you know how to put in your phase angle and your mu midline. So this is perfectly acceptable. This tells me your amplitude, it tells me your period, it tells me your phase angle, and it tells me your midline. So this tells me everything I want to know. So let's have a look at this one. 
This one looks really complicated. It not only has a phase shift, but it also has a new midline and it's got a period number. So the only thing that it's got going for it is that its amplitude is one. So let's just write some of these things down. The amplitude is one. The period is now two pi divided by two thirds pi, which we can solve and multiply top and bottom by three, which would be six pi over two, which would be my period is three. My H is one half and my K is negative two. So let's go ahead and draw our squiggle. Okay. And draw our midline. Now, if you notice, our midline is negative two. So if I draw in an axis here, our amplitude is one. So negative two, one up from negative two is negative one, one down from negative two is negative three. So we've drawn in our amplitude. It's a cosine curve, which means it peaks at zero, but now it's going to peak at one half. So we're gonna label this one half. And obviously that's radians because it's not in degrees. So that's one half radians. My period is three. So that means it's going to go from peak to peak in three radians. Okay. So what we do is we say one half plus three, see, because from here to here is three. So one half plus three is one half plus six halves, which is seven halves. So this will be seven halves. So I've drawn everything I need to show. I've drawn my midline, my amplitude, where my shift now is, and my period. So that's all I request of you. Now the other thing is flipping it. If it's a positive sine curve, you draw it crossing up. But if this had had a negative in front of it, you would have started it crossing down, okay? If this had had a negative in front of it, you would have drawn, you would have put your one half at the bottom because a negative cosine curve valleys, I call it, at zero. Now these aren't technical terms. These are just terms to try to make it a little bit easier to understand. Um, so uh, hopefully that helps.